Well, as always, greetings from Pennsylvania on a beautiful, absolutely beautiful spring day. Today is April 24th, Saturday afternoon. So I got an interesting story for you today, the Hermit of Hawk Mountain. So I've been kind of wanting to do this video for a while. It's kind of been on my bucket list. So we are here in Berks County, Pennsylvania, my home county. Um, just over that way is Hawk Mountain. If you're familiar with the area, back over that way is what's called the Pinnacle. So I'm going to be hiking to an area that's called Owl's Head, and that's right behind me. So this, this is the story of the Hermit of Hawk Mountain, about, a little bit about his life and his rather uh, tragic ending. So it's an interesting story, there's a little bit of a haunting vibe to this story too. So I'm going to show you the map here in a moment and kind of show you where I am. Also I have uh, channel sticker number 11 that I'm going to place out here. Just a little ways up the trail. The Appalachian Trail runs right up here too. So I'll put this, and this is the last uh, channel sticker of this series. Let me get it out here quick. And then I'll start putting some other, I have other ones to put out then. So it's the last, last one of these to put out. So right there's a map, I'll quick show that to you in a moment, but I wanna let you know where I am. So this is the parking lot for State Game Lands number 106. Right up there is what's called Owl's Head. Um, Hawk Mountain is up that way, and the the Pinnacle, which is a pop, super popular place to hike, is up that way. A lot of people park here to get to the Pinnacle. There's other places to park. Like this is State Game Lands 106. Down at the end of this little driveway is uh, Pine Swamp Road, which uh, hooks up with Hawk Mountain Road. So let me, and this is the parking lot for it. Plenty of parking here. Let me show you the map. It stays on my vehicle here. It's kind of windy out here. Breezy. Yeah, so here's where we are. This is the Hawk Mountain area. This is one of my Appalachian Trail maps. So the, the bright line on there is the Appalachian Trail. And we are parked right here. Uh, State Game Lands 106. And right here's Owl's Head. So we're going to be... I am going off trail. I'm going to hike up to the Appalachian Trail. That's where I'm going to place the channel sticker. And then we're going to be around this area. Of course, the purple coloring is long Hawk Mountain. Let me get in shadow there. And uh, the dark green is National Park Land because the Appalachian Trail goes to there. So that's where I am. Well, all right, let's get going. We're going to hike up this trail behind me. This will take us to the Appalachian Trail. That's probably where I'm going to place the channel sticker where this Axis Trail and the AT meet. And then uh, from there, we're probably going to go off trail. And like I do in a lot of these videos, as we hike along, I'm going to share the story about the hermit of Hawk Mountain. Kind of interesting story, like I said. So let's get up there. I'm not sure how far I'll get up there today, but there's an area, a rocky area, that I saw in the satellite image that I want to get to. Maybe I'll quick throw up a, an image of that on the on the screen here. That's where I am kind of want to head to, because I think that's where our hermit may have met his demise. And away we go. And like I said, up there, Ahead of us is Owl's Head. I'm not sure if I'll make it all the way to the top today. And I will try to remember to put the coordinates for where I parked down below in the, in the description. If I don't, just send me a quick reminder in the comments. No, I forget to put that there sometimes. So this is the story of a man named Matthias Berger. He came to this country in 1850 from Germany. And in 1861, he moved up and lived in the mountains here in Hawk Mountain to live the life of a hermit. Kind of like a hermit slash monk. He was a rather religious fellow. As you can see, spring has just exploded out here. All the green leaves are coming out, wildflowers are out. Beautiful. Yeah, so Matthias didn't live up here in Owl's Head, like I said. He did live about a mile away, more towards where the main Hawk Mountain area is. And he had, according to accounts, he had a little mud hut up there, about seven foot square, seven feet high, filled with all like little nooks and crannies. Had all kinds of books and little collectible items up there. Lived a simple life. Made his own bread, they say. Collected wild berries and herbs. Collected his own water. 
he did do uh, odd. She did. He did come down from the mountains at times to do odd jobs for the farmers. He would earn a little bit of cash that way. That, he, that way he could buy some things. And occasionally he would get a ride into town, into Reading, to the south, to go to church. He was a devout Catholic. So every once in a while he liked to get to church. And he was known as a kind and a gentleman. And he would welcome visitors. He had quite a few visitors come up to him up here on the mountain. He was known in the area. He was known to give like impromptu sermons to groups on top of the mountain. I guess whether you wanted a sermon or not, he kind of give you one. He was like, I guess he was kind of like a monk too. Let's say he would do baptisms up here. There are some springs up here. Like if you keep going and take the AT that way, there's a place called Panther Springs. I did a video there once. It's where, according to some stories, where the last mountain lion in Pennsylvania was shot and killed. And to be honest, on days like this, you can't blame Matthias for wanting to just to live out here by himself. You know, it'd be nice to have someone special out here with you, but at times, you know, the hermit life can be a bit attractive, but I think it would get a little bit old. At least for me. I do like my alone time out here in the woods, but it is nice to have people in your life too, even though they might annoy you at times. But you know, a day like this, it's a beautiful spring day. And in winter, when it's freezing cold, I don't know. But anyway, right up here is the junction with the Appalachian Trail. This like road we're going on. See right here, the trail, Appalachian Trail comes up here and then goes up this way. So this way is going north to Maine. That way goes south. So I'm gonna put their little, I'm gonna find a little spot here to put the channel sticker. Somewhere around here, somewhere right around this uh, post here. And then we will continue. I might go up the AT just a little bit and then we're gonna dive into the woods towards Al's head. All right, so channel sticker is placed. Right here is the post. So right here is that intersection, the AT, and there's a rock. Well, there's a big rock right here, but just behind it, there's a little rock, small one right by the post, and I have the, tra the channel sticker. The last one for this series is, is under there. So it's out here if you want it. And as always, you can, as soon as you find it, or close enough, you can send me a picture that you found it and I can let other people know that's not out here anymore. Yeah, so the sooner you send me a picture of it, the sooner I can put a post up in the comments and other places that the channel sticker has been found. Some people like to know, I get questions sometimes. People ask, hey, has it been found yet? And you know, sometimes I don't know yet. But, uh, and then as always, I will, I'll share that picture if you find it in a future video. All right, so I'm gonna, like I said, we're on the AT right now, but we're gonna, head off into the woods here in a moment. I am absolutely starving. I gotta eat lunch. All I had for breakfast was like coffee and some cookies. So, all right. Oh man, I, I know we're supposed to talk about Matthias, the hermit of Hawk Mountain, but you know, I have to show you the wildflowers too. Just beautiful. These are violets all along the trail here. Yeah. This could easily be a wildflower hike, too. But we got more to talk about Matthias, more about his life, and his, his tragic end. And like I said, there is a bit of a, a haunting aspect to this story. Actually, this whole area has a lot of haunted stories. Just down up a ways is Shambacher's Tavern. I actually talked about that recently in my most recent French and Indian War video, because I did a video on that years ago too. Shambacher's Tavern. All right, I think we're gonna head off trail right here. I gotta eat soon though. And there does seem to be a bit of a trail here. It has these ribbons marked. I don't know if it's just the property boundary or someone marking a trail.
that rock pile should be up here somewhere. The picture I showed you on the satellite images going steadily uphill here. All right, so I just had to stop and take a break and eat lunch. I'm just absolutely starving. I don't have any energy to climb up this mountain, so I'm gonna enjoy this and I'll get back to you. And we'll quick devour Snickers bar just for that extra energy. Still got a climb ahead of us. All right, just gonna sit here and relax for a little bit more. Let that food and water head just kind of do its thing. Settle down a bit. Speaking of drink, uh, another thing that Matthias was known for was making something called mountain tea. It's something that uh, I think the younger generation doesn't know a whole lot about, but the old timers, especially in this area, knew about. I think I had some almost 20 years ago, back when I first moved back home from my college years. Some people took me to where some was growing, told me about it. Mountain tea. If I remember correctly, it has kind of a minty taste to it. I like mint. So I gotta try to find that again. I have a feeling it's not as common as it used to be, but maybe it is. There's not growing up here, but so I'll make a fun video. So yeah, he would, uh, you know, the guests that came up to see him, visit him, he would serve them mountain tea. So overall, seems like a really cool guy. Maybe a bit, maybe a bit different, but sometimes different people are, you know, the more interesting folks out there. But yeah, he was well known. People liked him, but uh, like I said, there was a tragic ending to his story. I keep hinting at that, but we'll get that when we get to where that rock piles. I think that's where we'll talk about his ending. It's not a happy ending. Sorry, just switching hands here. It's not a happy ending, but you know, yeah. Like I said, he did do odd jobs for the farmers down here, and they did pay him in cash. I think that's part of what led to his demise. People, there, it was rumored that he had a stash of money or a small amount of gold hidden up on this mountain, or not not up here, but where. It, about a mile away where his hut was and that that gold or money was hidden in his hut or somewhere up on the mountain where he lived and yeah you might be able to guess where the story's going all right like so i'm gonna sit here for just a little bit i can see the pinnacle out that way nice little view all right i'll get back in a bit then we'll keep going up try to get to that rock pile right, so continuing to make my way up the mountain I am keeping my eyes open for snakes. This is rattlesnake time. I don't fear snakes. I kind of like finding them, but you do have to... It almost like I got thorns attached to me here. All, all these bushes are thorn bushes. Like I said, I don't fear snakes, rattlesnakes, but you do, you do need to respect them. Way I look at it. All right, getting a lot steeper here. All right, so I just stumbled upon a very distinct trail coming up this way. So this probably goes up to the that rock pile. Yes, yeah, so if I probably if I would have continued on the AT a little bit more, I would have come across this. But I didn't know this trail was here, so I'll have to take that on the way back, I guess. But yeah, I was uh, I was busting my way through all this stuff. All these things are thorns and other pokey things. <laughs> Sorry. We will hop on this trail. This will be a lot. Yeah, look at this. This will be a ton easier. All right. Cool. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this will take me to that feature that I saw. Well, I guess we'll find out. It's going in that general direction. I had to stop and take another break. That is one steep climb up there. Maybe I should eat two Snickers bars, but I'm glad I stopped because here's, here's a little wildflower down here. Kind of have to, it's hard to see because she, she hangs her head down. But this is Sessile Bellwort. I'll put the name down below. It goes by other names too. Let me zoom in a little bit on her. There you go. Hopefully that'll focus on her a little bit there. Yeah. She hangs her head down, but she's there. You just you just gotta pick her up to see her pretty face. Alright. Yeah, there's the view looking back. Yeah, that's the pinnacle out there. Awesome place. Alright. 
we're gonna keep going. I'm not sure. I think this trail might be taking us all the way to the top of Al's head, but I don't know if I, I'm not quite sure exactly where that rock pile is in regards to where I am now, but that's all part of the adventure. It looks like I see some, you know what? I think I see rocks way up there because that's the very top of Al's head. I do think we're heading in the right direction. I see a rock pile up ahead. All right, I know there's rocks everywhere, but I see one up in there. Phew, yes, yeah, so this is definitely lo definitely the location. I'm out of breath. Big, <coughs> big huge rock pile. There's actually some like rock columns or towers there. I think that's one thing I've seen on the satellite images. And the top of Al's head is up there yet. But yeah, we're gonna, in a moment, I'm gonna climb up in there. Of course, we'll watch out for snakes. I have no doubt they're up there, but man, whew, it is a climb. That trail is steep. Even if you're in shape, man, that trail is steep. All right, cool. I mean, I, I didn't, I knew there was a rock pile up here, but man, that's, that's pretty cool. It's, this would be worth a video all in of itself, even besides the uh, hermit story. All right, so I'm gonna get up there a little bit more, find a place to chill out for a bit, have some more water. Yeah, here's a better look at that one stone column there. Don't think I'll be climbing to the top of that, but pretty awesome area up here, just climbing around these rocks. Gotta be careful though. Man, this is this is really awesome. And I think I know why. Like I said, I'm thinking in this area is where Matthias met his demise, and I'm starting to think I know why. Yeah, I know I keep saying it, but just super, super awesome place full of little, even little caves to hide in. That might be kind of important to our story. But I want to get up a little bit further yet. Yeah, looking back at that column, there's like a little, I don't think a little stone like holding it up there. Not sure if that's natural or someone did that, but let's carefully have a look around back this way. Getting some views out that way. Hawk Mountain is up this way. All right, beautiful up here. I gotta find a place to sit and finish our story. All right, that is a cool shot. So that will definitely be an Instagram pic over there. But I think a little bit later, I'm gonna climb over to the base of that at least. But yeah, I should've, almost wish I would've eaten lunch up here. Just amazing. But let's finish our story. Finally. So as I hinted at earlier, our nice little story does end in tragedy. In uh, the summer of 1890, like I said, he moved up here in 1861, and he was 77 years old when 1890 rolled around, but no one had heard from him for a while. Like I said, sometimes he came into town or worked for the farmers, and no one had heard from him. So if someone went up to visit him to see what was going on, and his little hut, he wasn't in his hut, and his hut was just like ransacked, like someone had just torn through it, like someone was looking for something. And... Uh, it almost looked like there had been a struggle had taken place there too. So he obviously wasn't there. It looked like he had been in some kind of trouble. So they formed a search party, I think on July 16th, they came up here looking for him. And like I said, his, his hut was about a mile away over back on Hawk Mountain, but they came, you know, someone, at least someone came out this way to what's called Owl's Head up there. And they found his body, as the stories say, like on a pile of rocks. And uh, yeah, his body, he was not alive. He had not been alive for at least a week or so, according to the, uh, you know, the condition of his body. And uh, the vultures, the vultures had had his, their way with his body too. I'm kind of wondering if that's how they find him, found him, because you know, vultures often circle around something they're eating before they swoop down. And if you get anywhere close, you know, they'll fly off. So if they were searching for him or for his body and he saw the vultures, that would be a clear sign that, yeah, Matthias is nearby. So yeah, he was found on a pile of rocks. And what do we have here? This is Owl's head, or we're right below the tip of it. And get all this 
this rock pile here. So I'm kind of thinking that maybe this is where they found him. And I'll tell you a bit more of why I think so in a moment. And as far as they could tell, it looked like someone had come looking for him and his hut in search of, remember we were talking about that rumor about the hidden gold or the hidden cash, like someone thought that he had some stashed wealth up here and they came looking for him, looking for, you know, ransacked, probably attacked him in his hut, ransacked his hut and he ran off and they looked, when they found his body, all his, his clothes had been, all the pockets were turned out and everything. So people were looking for something, even, even probably after they killed him, they were looking for money on him. So he ran, it's obvious that he ran, they think it looked like there had been a struggle and that he ran from his hut and was chased to this location. And, you know, I showed you all these rocks, all these little caves you could hide in. So I think, I feel like he was, you know, he would have known this area. I feel like maybe he was coming here. Like maybe he thought he could hide here. And I guess, I doubt he was, I get the feeling that maybe uh, they just tossed his body off the top up there onto the rocks down below here as a way to get rid of, you know, the evidence. You, you know, and even after they discovered there's probably nothing in his hut, you know, you know, he himself is a witness of who attacked him, so you got to get rid of the witness. So yeah, July 16th, 1890, they found the Hermit of Hawk Mountain. And they did, they did take his body down off the mountain. He was buried in town, in the Catholic cemetery. So, kind of a sad story to, you know, the, the end of life of a, seemed like a pretty cool dude. But, you know, someone had to, yeah. Some greedy person had to take advantage of that. You know, and, and the people that attacked and killed him, they didn't find anything anyway, except, you know, his personal belongings. People that knew Matthias knew that he had no, he had no wealth stashed away up here. So, but, so in the end, the people looking for the wealth, they, they found nothing. And t to this day, they have no idea who the murderers were. It remains a mystery. Pretty, pretty interesting story. Kind of like it's kind of sad in the end, but there's the world has people like that in it. They gotta, yeah. Anyway, we could say a lot about that, but and like I said, there's there are tales of this place being haunted. This area here on Hawk Mountain or Owl's Head, that you know the typical hauntings. People say they see see a man walk around up here, or orbs, or just different. You know the, the typical uh, haunting stories up here all right so i'm gonna i'm just gonna chill for a little bit i'm gonna explore a little bit around here a bit more i think but my our story of the hermit is over i don't have really much more to say about him kind of would like to have met him i think in a way sat down and had some mountain tea with him all right beautiful place to just hang out glad i found that trail too all right i'll get back to you a little bit later so down over there is where I was sitting for lunch, but I want to show you what it looks like up behind me. Up there's the top of Owl's Head. I just want to show you what I was thinking about. Maybe like Matthias was headed this way from his hut. Like there's a great place you know, if you're trying to hide from someone trying to kill you. I kind of wonder if he never quite made it down here and you know maybe they just tossed his body over the edge and down here is where they found him then. Anyway. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, here's the back side of this uh, interesting rock column. I'm going to try and get over there a little bit. See if I can make my way over. It'd be cool to get a shot of me standing up on top of that thing, but that's not going to happen. I can tell you that. Pretty cool up here. All right, so I just had the camera set up down there and you saw me hike up here or scramble up here and this is kind of what it looks like up here. These are those rocks that are like we saw earlier and they are natural. I mean, 
as far as I can tell, I'm not going to try and move them. I mean, nothing would probably happen, but still. All right, let's walk around the edge here. Carefully. Because it is a bit of a, well, a little bit more than a bit. It is quite a drop down to the bottom down there. Pretty interesting up here. I mean, if you wanted to, you could climb up top there and then up to the top of the rock up there, but I'm not doing that. But you could come in here. Don't see any snakes anywhere. Actually, this is pretty cool. Squeezing through here. Oh, maybe. Oh. All right. I'm kind of. I gotta. I gotta turn you off for a moment. I'm kind of stuck. All right, made it through. This is a little tight, little squeeze, but there's a nice little rock ledge here to sit on. Yeah, there's that hole back here. I'm squeezing through. Yeah, I'm still just sitting up here on top of that rock column. Well, not on the tippy top, in this little nook. I just, you know, crawl through that little opening there, kind of on the other side. I think it just showed a clip of me sitting out here. But yeah, I'll turn you around in a moment. I like this spot a lot. You're, I'm up pretty high, but you feel secure. You feel secure with the rocks behind you. And you're in the shade right here. Like on a hot summer day, this would be a place to sit. Let me turn you around and show you what I'm seeing. So this is my view. And as I was just sitting here, I kind of wonder if our hermit, Matthias, I wonder if he ever sat here. Like I said earlier, no doubt he knew about this place. You know, he lived up in this area for, you know, from, from 1861 to 1890, almost 30 years. So I kind of have to wonder if he ever just sat here at this location. I like, I'd like to think that he did. Yeah, we got a plane flying overhead. All right. I don't think Matthias had to worry about plane noise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely awesome location up there. Just kind of made my, made my way down. There's a nice little trail kind of running along the edge that goes up and down. Absolutely loved it up there. All right, so headed back down this steep trail. Of course, going down will be a lot easier. Of course, going down is kind of hard on the knees sometimes, but... You know, speaking of, you know, Matthias perhaps spending time up there on that, that rock I was at, no doubt, you know, any number of Indians over time sat there too. Beautiful spot to sit. And who knows what else, different pioneers and settlers maybe. Cause it just, it's just one of the spot to, spots that kind of like keeps drawing you towards it. You just kind of have to go there. All right, I'm gonna head back down. I kind of want to see exactly where this trail comes out. I know it probably goes right down to the Appalachian Trail, but I kind of want to mentally mark that location. All right, time to go down. And here we are down at the bottom. Right here is the Appalachian Trail. Oops. Yeah, going this way. Looks like trail we were on goes down too. I'm not sure to where. But uh, yeah, there's there's the AT. Down there is the trail. It just came down. It took us all up to the rocks. So this is, so I'm going to follow this back to where we'll join up with that dirt road. I kind of wonder if this, now I'm kind of wondering where this goes. But uh, Anyway, yeah, so just up ahead is our junction with that dirt road. I decided just to go back this way. So it's not even a five minute walk, probably from the junction down here where I hit the sticker up to that trail. If you're coming up this way, the trail will be on your left. Now, oh, maybe a five minute walk because you're going uphill this way. So not too far up. Yeah, 
And of course, right there is channel sticker number 11, waiting for someone to come find him, or her, or whatever sticker is. <laughs> right there it is. All right, so we'll turn. Yeah, the AT continues on that way, but we're gonna head back down to the parking lot, which is a blue blaze trail. All right, so I'm pretty much back at the parking lot just about. I was, keeping an, I was keeping an eye open for that, to see if that trail came down to this road, but I don't see anything off to my left, so I'm not sure where it goes. Maybe it does further down, but anyway, I'm going to end the video here. I'm going to get home. All right, beautiful, beautiful little adventure. Cool story, sad in the end, but awesome location. But if you do go up there, just be careful. You know, it's the kind of place you could get hurt. Didn't see any snakes up there today either. I like snakes, but like I said, you gotta respect them. All right, I will. I'll see you around. Thanks for coming along.